Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It is another repeat of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with your beauties to preview a one of specialty event. The World Tour has no break for T1 after winning Worlds because now they're over to Germany in Berlin to the Velodrome for a Red Bull League of Their Own matchup against some ERL teams, a streamer team, and a trio of LEC teams. Oh, yes, sir. Dial it up. Just when you thought the offseason was going to get too hard to handle. No games going on. No excitement. Just feeding off of the rumors that we get and speculation. We're getting a gift. A nice prize here. Thanks to Red Bull and these organizations dropping us into this tournament. Yes, T1. A handful of LEC, some German squads, and a streamer squad. Let's see what type of mix we got at this one. Obviously, we got to preface this. Guys, this is a show match. It is for fun. There is nothing of substance to garner from this. But basically, T1 is just there to run the gauntlet and play every team here. First, you have the two ERL squads will show off, uh, will face off. Winner will get a matchup against T1. They're going to play against this streamer filled team that has a Gorin and No Way on it. So. T1's going to have some fun there. The biggest thing about this format, I'm, I'm going to read this rule directly. T1 are locked out of all champions that have previously entered the Rift. Bands and non-T1 matches are not part of their own champion pool restriction. But what, what I'm taking from that is even the opposing team that T1's playing, whatever champions they pick are off the Rift. So the first three matches, you're going to be... 30 champions down for T1? I, I've been looking through it. I haven't seen anything in the rules or anything elsewise that has dissuaded from reading it as you have, where it is going to be not just the champions that T1 is playing, but the champions their opponent is playing will also then be removed for that next match for them. This is going to get wonky. You better <laughs> believe it. And it's going to get wonky, I think, a lot faster than you're expecting with the raw skill that the T1 players have, I think that they'll be without question able to pull it off and provide us some of these fireworks that are going to come through, some of these crazy picks, because you better believe, you know, two, third game in, you're seeing the wackiest of picks come through. We might be even dialing up the Tarek Master Yi combo for owner and, and Faker. And this time, Faker's playing the Master Yi. He's not letting owner get his hands on it, but... The rules do change the last match, of course, final boss, is T1 versus G2, and all the champion restrictions are lifted there. I don't think that means it's just going to be a boring meta fest in that final, especially when you're matching up against G2. But there's still four matches before that where you're going to be going 40 champions deep. I love to see that because this is a show match. It's just for fans to have a good time for some ERL teams to play against T1 and Faker an opportunity that they never will have and let's be honest even squads like K-Corp and Team Heretics unlikely to get a matchup against T1 normally. Yeah so it is it's good to have this type of event existing in the first place is one of the things that I want to you know mention and talk about but the other thing is looking at it which side would you rather be on if you're one of these ERL squads or you're one of these teams that you know massive, massive underdogs against the reigning world champions? Would you rather face the full might at game one? Everything's on the table for T1 to take you down. Or would you rather be the ones getting the extra for fun, extra silly, that extra chance that maybe you're able to take advantage of something going a little wacky on the side of T1? Which one are you wanting? You wanting that first match or are you wanting that third or fourth match? I'm, I'm taking that third or fourth one because I don't care the circumstance. You're checking off if you somehow win. You said, yep, beat T1, defending world champs, no problem. Uh, it doesn't matter that they had to play Alistair mid. No, 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 we're ignoring that. <laughs> we beat him. But then you enter into the conversation of, oh man, I got solo boloed by Faker's Alistar mid? Oh no! You I mean, that's that another claim to fame. Mark that off, you know? <laughs> that's true. You can slice it up that way. Another thing to look at with this event is we're having pretty much the whole LEC crew come on through for the broadcast. So the presentation is going to be up to that level. I think a lot of people want to be seeing from this event. Very excited to see this one come through and think about the different possibilities that we have. Yes, for fun, yes, nothing really serious at the end of the day, but getting some type of games, some type of professional atmosphere, 
this is what we want. And we got Faker coming in fresh off his eSports Athlete of the Year award from the Game Awards, which I'd have to double check, but I'm sure he's won it at least a couple times before that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm very certain that he has in a couple other other years, especially even excluding a couple of the lean years for T1. I think that that award kind of likes to pick the name and Faker gets thrown in there quite a little bit. Happy that he did get that achievement for himself. I don't think Faker has paid much attention at all to any of these little awards that he has to record a thank you video for type of thing. Not that he's not gracious to get into these type of situations. I think he is more so focused even on the Rift, even if it is this for fun event if for Red Bull. And I know this is probably just a one-off thing that Red Bull is setting up here with the EU teams and T1, but you better believe that in the post all-star event era riot's going to be keeping an eye on how this event plays out and maybe start thinking about their own something some kind of show match fun event to have that's in between the spring split kicking off and after worlds which is obviously where all stars used to be slated in. i think it's a slam dunk right and i think we can look at the scheduling and look at the past and realize there is an appetite for some type of event. It doesn't have to be that ultra series. Let's focus in, let's lock in, it's the brand new year. No, it can be this celebration of having a competitive scene of these players that we love so much and then taking the game to different places where we can get something interesting. And I think that is one of the great combos that we're seeing with this Red Bull event that we didn't quite always get even with the all-star events sometimes it still stayed a little bit too metastatic a little bit too boring by the numbers you put in things like this where it is especially again maybe you know it is only hyper focused on t1 but there are ways to massage this into another you know more teams other teams type of tournament event as well and keep that interesting angle in there yeah and maybe it becomes you know uh more segregated rivalry matchup where it's na versus eu lck versus lpl or something but I, I am i do feel like i'm missing a little bit the acknowledgement of players that had standout years even if they didn't necessarily have the success internationally obviously I'm talking na and eu specifically um on that one but seeing something that can get the fans more involved too is the biggest thing that i think we've been missing since all stars has gone away and I've seen kind of various ideas thrown around in the last little bit as we haven't had these All-Stars events or some things that they could do. I've seen some interesting ones of wanting to combine League of Legends pros with the Valorant pro scene and try and integrate oh. a little bit more about Riot games and mix them through in that type of way. There's a lot of things I think that we could do with this type of open space in the season, as well as realizing there's an appetite and a space for an event that isn't that competitive ultra premier tier that is Worlds, that is MSI, we can dial it back a little bit and celebrate at the same time. That's why everyone should be rooting for this event to go well, be exciting, be a good show for the fans and players alike so that Riot can take note. And as you mentioned, see that there is a desire for more of this so that they can look into it, whether it's towards the end of uh, the new year in December or sometime later on in the year. I think there is still a hankering for some kind of fun show match with some of the best players in the world. But for now, we'll have to watch the league of their own over the weekend. We'll obviously recap all the matches after they happen. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.